Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us this week in America on the Blue Casting Radio Network website, thisweekinamerica.us. As mentioned on the program, I, uh, an interview today, a guest that's going to, like, I think help all of us out because so many people are struggling with trying to stay in their present job and trying to figure out how secure that is. And for many people, it's like, okay, I've had a pay cut. I'm being furloughed uh, once a month. I can't make ends meet. I've got to go out and try to find something else. Or other people are totally out of work and looking. With us on the program is Martha Mangelsdorf. She's the author of the new book, Strategies for Successful Career Change, Finding Your Very Best, Your uh, your next life work. Martha, thank you for joining us on This Week in America. Rick, it's great to be here with you. You know, there's so many interesting things in the book, and where I want to start is let's talk about your background, because you went through where you decided, which a lot of people do, this really isn't for me now. I'd like to have something else in my life. And the second time, it's like, well, you got laid off, and you you had to go out and try to find something. Let's talk a little bit about your story, because you touch so many bases that people are going through right now. Sure. Uh, yes, it, it's funny. I'm, I'm a journalist, and I've been a journalist for a long time, but I have managed to experiment with career change of both types. Uh, one is, yes, I, uh, I, I worked for many years at Inc. Magazine, which is a magazine about how to run your own business. And after being there for about, oh gosh, over 10 years, uh, I was a senior editor, and I was feeling a little bit like my work ran my life. And I wanted to try something different, but I, I didn't know what. And uh, I talked to my boss, maybe could I work a little less and take a pay cut and try some, you know, and, and just have a little more time to myself. But th- that wasn't appropriate for the publication. And eventually I decided to try a different, try something different and went to work in a small nonprofit that helped people start businesses because I was very passionate about helping, giving people good information about how to run your own business. And I did that for a while and really enjoyed it and then went back into journalism because I, I missed it, it turned out. But I, I, exper- I, I knew the, the, when people change careers from something that they've uh, liked or, or had success with, but what they want to do something different and they change careers voluntarily, it's very scary to make that leap. You well, feel- and, and you mentioned that, that it mm-hmm. was scary. And yep, you say and very honestly, I mean, for some people, it's like, you know, we could turn this into something glamorous. And I guess if you want to, you can. But mm-hmm. the reality is it's hard work and yep. uh, it's somewhat risky. That's true. Yep. Changing careers is something, uh, one of the, the top, the, the book we're out of actually a, a later experience when I had, uh, I was laid off during the last recession. I'd been working on the magazine's website and uh, during the downturn, this was back in 2001, I got laid off and decided to become self-employed. And I was uh, writing for the Boston Globe newspaper uh, for their career section. And I realized that I saw all these people who in the downturn were having to reinvent their careers. And Uh, make changes often that they hadn't planned on. And I got started writing about that uh, and started researching it, and I've been interested in that topic ever since. Well, it's so interesting because you've talked to so many people, and Mm -hmm. what gives it a a different perspective is you not only just talked with the people that were actually out there looking, Mm -hmm. you talked to their colleagues, you talked to their spouses, Mm -hmm. you got that other perspective. So as you're you're writing in the book Strategies for Successful Career Change, Mm -hmm. you look at it from the total perspective of the person and people close to him, not just the individual. Yes, that's, that's true. I did talk, when I was doing the newspaper research, I talked to people who had, had knew the person and their spouse often. I mean, it depended on the, the circumstance, but I always talked to other people who knew them. Because, yeah, you can get a different perspective. Um, and certainly, if you are thinking about making a change in your career, whether you're doing it because it's something that you, you just really want to do from your heart and you're not being forced to by economic circumstances, or whether you've been downsized, it is really important to take into account the effect that's going to have uh, on those close to you and to talk it through with them. Because it yeah, it is a decision that if you're if you're married, it will affect your family, and uh, if you're single, you want to think through carefully uh, how how you're going to do it, and it'll affect people close to you, your friends as well. You went through two um, emotions, two mm-hmm. two phases when mm-hmm. you when you left the first time, when you did it willingly. Mm-hmm. One, you had to go through the period where, okay, how do I pay the bills now? I, I do want to make a change mentally. I'm ready for this. How do I go about making that change? How difficult is that to face a situation where I may not be getting regular paychecks? And and if I do, they may not be as big as the paychecks I, I, I was getting before. You're talking about someone who's uh, being forced to change careers because of some layoff or something. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And they're looking at something else and it's not paying the same thing. So it's like, whoops, I've got to take into account yeah. trying to pay the bills. And, of course, health insurance comes into it as well. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a very challenging, uh, challenging situation. Um, a, a lot of times, if you're, if you're in the situation where you've been downsized, let's say, and you're facing making some type of, uh, of change, obviously a big thing to look at is, uh, is what 
what your family budget is. One, one thing that does help people some, it, I mean, it depends on the circumstances, but nowadays their families often have two people working, and that can help a transition period. Uh, but you need to look really realistically at uh, how much money you need to meet your basic living expenses, what, you, what your fixed obligations are, and are there any ways that you can uh, live on less for a while if you need to. Uh, some of the, the, the ways that there are all kinds of ways that people whom I interviewed found to, to live on less. Sometimes, you know, it, it could range from uh, being in a smaller living space to um, not buying a new car for a while. There, there are all kinds of ways you can try to. Uh, uh, get by, get by in less, but it definitely is a challenge. Um, it helps if you are working now to try to set aside money so that in case anything does happen, you have reserves. That always obviously makes something easier. Uh, but um, generally, if you if you do face some kind of transition where you're going to be earning less, you want to look at ways that you can get by on a little less. You're listening to This Week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network website, thisweekinamerica.us. With us on the program, Martha Mangelsdorf, author of the book, Strategies for Successful Career Change. It's new. It's available all across the country. You can go to our website, get information, or go directly to Martha's, which is strategiesforcareerchange.com. A fascinating book. It's very easy to read. You can just go through chapters if they apply directly to you. A lot of great resources in there as well. We are talking about some of the situations you go through it's interesting because you say this gives you an opportunity and you talk about it with some examples in the book mm -hmm. to maybe sit and, and sort of reevaluate where you are in life and uh, and maybe even change a direction you talk about uh, Duncan McDougall is an example in the book where he had a chance to really go back and look and think you know I'm going to take advantage of this and I'm going to do what I really feel comfortable doing and want to do Sure. He was someone who changed careers, uh, careers very much voluntarily. Uh, and if you were thinking about d d doing that, in other words, you're, it's, it's strictly coming from you, it's very important to think about what your goals in life are. Uh, it can really help you a lot and because it can help. It's very hard to make those kinds of changes where you're going to walk away from one career and try something new. And uh, it's, it's helpful to figure out what, what, kind of, what you really want to accomplish in life. Also, in that situation, it can be helpful. Uh, a lot of times people will do two careers at once. And Duncan McDougall was an example in the book of someone who he had worked as a management consultant and decided he wanted to start a nonprofit that's called the Children's Literacy Fund. It helps, uh, pe helps children uh, get books to rural libraries that serve children in Vermont and New Hampshire. And uh, he, well, he was researching that idea to see whether it made sense and whether it was a good idea. He also worked as a consultant half-time in order to pay the bills. You talk about, and this is an interesting concept, a mm -hmm. clearness committee. And uh -huh. as you're going through all of this, and this is a Quaker custom that, uh -huh. that you talk about, and in fact, an interesting individual, uh, Parker Palmer, actually he was going to make what might have been a very bad career decision. And when he was in the committee, suddenly realized, I really don't have any motivation for this job. Uh-huh, yeah. I'm, I'm also a Quaker, and a clearness committee is a, is a Quaker tradition, but it, it actually can be used for people of all different kinds of uh, traditions. Basically what you're doing is you're getting a number of people whom you respect and whose uh, opinions you respect, and it would be a very good thing to do in a religious congregation. You could get some people from your church or synagogue uh, to sit with you and, and leave a bunch of quiet time and ask questions that come to them about a decision you're thinking of making. And the example you're referring to, Rick, uh, this is a story that's from an author whose name is Parker Palmer who wrote a book called Let Your Life Speak. And he tells the story of how in his own life he was thinking of taking a particular job, and he had a clearness committee, and one of the people in the committee asked him, what would you like about this job? And he found himself answering with all the things he wouldn't like about the job. It was a very prestigious job. And he kept saying, well, I wouldn't like this, I wouldn't like that. And the, the person on his committee said, well, what would you like about it? And he finally realized that what he would like about the job was having his picture in the paper with, an, with the title <laughs> underneath it that he would achieve with this job. And he realized that wasn't a good, good reason to take a job. Yeah, and, he liked the title. That was the yeah, basis. Yeah, but sometimes it's hard in our, in our culture because, you know, we're, we're taught that – you know, prestige is good, and earning more money is always good, and so it's sometimes hard to get in touch with what you really want, and uh, a process where people you respect 
help you sit down quietly and think about uh, what you what you what's really the best thing for you. Well, be you're helpful. you're forced to say it out loud, and sometimes <laughs> when you do that, it doesn't make quite as much sense as it does when it's kicking around uh, in your brain. Strategies for successful career change is the new book. Martha Mangelsdorf is the author. She is our guest on this week in America. Our website this week in America us. Martha's is strategy for career change.com. You can go directly to our website and hit link on and get all that information. Some people say, okay, this is the opportunity to follow your bliss. And you use, put some pretty good advice in there. Uh, maybe follow half your bliss and still be able to pay the bills. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Here's, I don't know where that idea exactly comes from, but there is an idea in our culture. It's, it's sort of popular wisdom or something that if you do, if you follow your passion, if you follow your bliss, that will lead to economic success. Now, I interviewed lots of people who changed careers, tried to change careers, uh, and found that there didn't seem to be any correlation between how passionate you were about the work that you took up and how much it paid. Generally speaking, as, as far as I could see, you tend to earn in a new field what people in that field tend to earn when they're starting out. Uh, and that's a, a really important thing to keep in mind. What you, if you, particularly if you're in midlife and you have responsibilities like rent, mortgage, children, those types of things, follow your bliss may sound great, but it, it may be better to meet your bliss halfway. Look at the intersection of what you like to do, find something you like to do that people will pay you adequately for, uh, so that you're looking for work you like, but... It, it, but it also is something that will, will pay reasonably well, well as much you, as you need it to pay, or you're willing to make a change in your lifestyle. Yeah, and you say in the book, which I think is so important after talking to all these people, that when you're going to do something, do it gradually. Have a plan, do it gradually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really important to, to recognize that career change uh, may not be something that happens quickly. It usually isn't. Uh, that there may be stages along the way. And you also, this is, I think it's really important, you don't have to know all the answers up front. I've, I've seen people sometimes get stuck thinking, I need to figure out what I'm going to do next. Like, as if just sitting in a room by themselves, they could figure that out necessarily. Think about it in terms of testing ideas about what you may want to do next, if you're not sure what it is. Uh, in other words, you want to figure out ways to explore, is this going to be a good fit for me? That could be doing some research on the Internet about what the occupation is like and, and what it requires. It, it definitely should be talking to people who are already in that field. If you don't think you know anybody who is already in the field that you're thinking of, of joining, you, you probably know somebody who knows somebody. And if you start putting the word out about, you know, to your friends and acquaintances and family, I'm thinking about this career, do you know anybody who does this, you can probably connect to somebody and ask them some questions about what the work is like, you know, what kind of training you need, what a typical day is like, how much do people make when, in this area when they start in the field, those sorts of things. Besides practical advice mm -hmm. and, and talking with people who have gone through all of these different scenarios you're talking about, you've got great resources in there and you talk about that. There are different places on the internet to look at to research potential careers. CareerOneStop.org is available. And you mentioned uh, trying to figure out how much a job's going to pay. Jobstart.org is just one of several websites out there that will give you some, some salary options. At least you'll know the range so as you're considering this you'll know whether it's feasible or not. Terrific point, Rick. In fact, I, 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 careeronestop.org is definitely a place you should, a website you should check out uh, if you're seriously thinking about making a change in your career, particularly if you've been uh, through some kind of layoff. Uh, the the um, uh, careeronestop.org site, they have a link to a reemployment portal. And uh, one of the things that you can do is find out the closest one-stop career center to you. That's a program that's um, uh, affiliated with the U.S. Department of Labor and, and can help you find uh, their local centers. They have different names in different states, but you can find out about job training options. You can, they can help you search for a job, that type of thing. So it's a great resource. We've only got a couple minutes left in the program. You mentioned training. You discussed that a lot in the book to find out whether you really need training, how mm -hmm. you go about it, how you fund training, because sometimes you can pay for something you really don't need. And you can pay for it over a 30-year period, and you really shouldn't be doing that. The other thing, and we'll wrap up with this, is talking about self-employment because you make the case, and boy, you see it so frequently. Sometimes your best opportunity to get in with a company is to be self-employed, to be an independent contractor. They don't have to pay health insurance for you, uh, and you go through the, the pros and cons of, of, of self-employment and going that route. Sure. Self-employment uh, it can be a, a, a really good option for people, depending on their circumstances. The hardest part right now with self-employment is health insurance uh, and figuring out what the options are for, for somebody uh, who's self-employed in your state, unless you're getting insurance through your spouse. 
Uh, but yeah, the one thing that can be particularly helpful in this kind of job market, and I'm glad you brought this up, Rick, is uh, trans- thinking about the idea of transitional self-employment. And that is, if you've been downsized, say, and you're having a hard time finding a full-time job because of the way the, the market is right now, it's, it can be a long, slow process. Think in terms of looking for project work, if that's feasible in your field or in another field that you're interested in trying. And the reason for that is that uh, in this economy, a lot of companies are slow to hire right now or reluctant to hire or unable to hire, and many of them have, have downsized. What that means is that there are chunks of work that need doing that they may be able to contract out. Uh, and that can be an option for people. It can be helpful for people who are thinking of changing careers because oftentimes it's easier to get a project than it is an entire new job. Well, and when you look at it, the company, if they're going to hire me and I'm going mm-hmm. to be an employee, they're going to pay me and probably, mm-hmm. what, 22 25% on top of that for mm-hmm. all the benefits, where if they just pay me a project fee, an hourly mm-hmm. fee or a project fee, however they set that up, that's what they're paying me, so their costs are going to be a whole lot less. Sure, sure. And that can be, obviously, many times people in that situation want a full-time job and are looking for that, uh, but it can be a good transitional strategy if you're trying to keep your resume fresh uh, and bring in some income while you're looking for a full-time Pros work. and cons of that, uh, much more in the book, Strategies for <laughs> Successful Career Change. Unfortunately, we're out of time. You'll find out more at Martha's website, which is strategiesforcareerchange.com. Martha Mangelsdorf has been our guest on This Week in America. Or go to our website. You can link on and get all the information, thisweekinamerica.us.